Here is a question that will not be put to sleep. It is the question of the admission of the people of this country to the rights which are guaranteed by every principle and by everything which is comprehended in the constitution of this United Kingdom. In 1861, this general question of parliamentary reform was voted a nuisance. It was betrayed. But the bill and that question is not dead. And somehow or other, the Tories, and those Whigs who are like Tories, entertain uncomfortable feelings. What is this apparition which alarms them? They are afraid of the five or six millions of grown-up Englishmen, men who are allowed to marry, to keep houses, to rear children, men who are expected to earn their living, pay taxes, who must obey the laws. They are afraid of these five or six million, who by the present system of representation are shut out from the exercise of the franchise. I ask you, men of Birmingham, who are a fair representation of the great mass of the five or six millions, why you should be thus treated in your own land. An Englishman, if he goes to the Cape, can vote. If he goes to Australia, he can vote. It is only in his own country, on his own soil, the very soil which he has enriched with his labour and the sweat of his brow, that he is denied this right, which in every other community of Englishmen in the world would be freely accorded to him. Conservatism, be it Toryism or Whiggism, is the true national peril we have to face. They may dam the stream, they may keep back the waters, but the volume is ever increasing and it descends with accelerating force. And the time will come when in all probability the waters will burst their banks and those men who fancy they are stemming this imaginary apparition of democracy will themselves be swept away by the resolute will of a united and determined people. England has long been famous for the enjoyment of personal freedom by her people. They are free to think, they are free to speak, they are free to write, and England is famed now for the freedom of her industry and the greatness and freedom of her commerce. Who is there who will meet me on this platform and will dare say to an open meeting of his fellow countrymen that these millions are too ignorant or too destructive to be entrusted with the elective franchise? I at least will never thus slander my countrymen. I claim for them the right of admission through their representatives in the most ancient and venerable parliament which at this hour exists among men. And when they are thus admitted, and not until then, it may be truly said that England, the august mother of free nations, herself is free.